Hey everyone, today is the last day of the semifinals for G Fuel Code Madness. This is uh, this is basically the home stretch, right? And if we finish this round as one of the top two most used codes, we are going to get our very own Immortal Shaker Cup. Now, what you guys see on the screen is basically just like a mock concept. This wouldn't be the exact Shaker Cup, but it is a rough sketch. So if you want to see something like this come to life, right now code Immortal will get you 30% off everything on the site including like the uh, the three starter pack which costs like five bucks so even the smallest orders help out a ton i do seriously appreciate everyone who has used the code so far and uh yeah let's see if we can get this shaker cup anyways on to today's video ladies and gentlemen hey hi how you doing welcome back to the channel now we've covered a handful of loadouts for warzone already but a lot of those are based around using certain weapon combinations and playing around a certain playstyle. However, today I wanted to change that up a bit and instead break down what I consider to be the best class setups for every assault rifle in the game, and then break down what kind of loadouts you want to run with each of them. So that said, if you enjoyed the video at any point, or if you find it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it. And of course, if you're new here, we've been gaining over a thousand new subscribers every single day recently, so if you want to stay up to date with the latest Call of Duty news, intel, tips, tricks, and everything in between, feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. So basically, to just lay out the video, we'll run through all 10 of the assault rifles and break down the best setups for those, and then we'll run through the secondary, the perks, and the equipment to be using in general. So going in order, first up we've got the Kilo 141, which in multiplayer is a very consistent weapon, especially at a range, and that same consistency transfers over into Warzone. The Kilo is going to be great for those medium and longer range gunfights because, uh, I mean, as simple as it sounds, it is just a really decent rifle. So on it, I'm using the Monolithic Suppressor. You're going to be seeing a whole lot of this in today's video. The, uh, the Prowler Barrel to get the most range and control possible. The GI Mini Reflex because, honestly, I just don't like the iron sights all that much. The Commando Foregrip for some recoil management. And finally, the 60 round mags. However, the 50 round mags will suffice just as well. Whatever you do, just don't use the 100 round drum because uh, that thing is very, very slow. Now, don't get me wrong, it will be efficient for wiping squads, but slow as can be, so honestly, I just wouldn't recommend it. Then, next up, we've got the FAL, a weapon that I really haven't used a ton of, but because of its power, it is really strong in Warzone when used as more of a range-based tack rifle in a sense. Rushing with this thing is not going to be the best option, I'll just put it out there, just because of its semi-auto nature. But it is a great alternative for longer range fights when you just don't want to be using a sniper. So on the FAL, I'm using the Monolithic Suppressor, the Marksman Barrel to extend the range and control even more, the tack laser as this is going to help with the mobility and also the stability of the weapon too. Then I've got the Solo Zero Optics Mini Reflex, that one is simply preference based, and finally the Stippy Grippy for better mobility as well. Honestly though, I will say this is not my first choice when it comes to rifles, but it is definitely strong and not too bad in the right hands. Now we've got the king of the rifles, the M4A1. Pretty much ever since day one of Modern Warfare, not even just Warzone, but literally the entire game, the M4A1 has been the top dog. And in Warzone, it is definitely still a contender. I don't know whether or not it is definitively the number one weapon to use, but it is certainly up there with the best of the best. So here we've got the Monolithic Suppressor, the M16 Barrel for better range and control, the GI Mini Reflex, the Commando Foregrip, and your choice of either the 50 or 60 round mags. Now 50 will be a little bit faster, but 60 will help with more squad engagements, so uh, I guess really just pick your poison and what suits your playstyle more. After that we've got the FR556 aka the FAMAS, which is another kind of awkward weapon to use. It's definitely going to be a lot better at medium and longer ranges, unless you are just incredibly accurate, right? But its burst mechanic can be really solid if you know how to lead your shots enough on a moving target or when an enemy is standing still, as obviously that's going to hit three shots back to back to back and deal some pretty serious damage. Now on the FAMAS, I like to use the suppressor of the monolithic nature, the sniper barrel for the best range and control, the GI mini reflex, 
However, some more long range based optics can also work well too. I also use the 50 round mags just because personally I'm not super accurate with the FAMAS and extended mags help a lot in Warzone. And finally, the grip tape that is stippled. Then next up we've got the Odin and this is the powerhouse of the assault rifles. It does have the best damage out of all of them that we have available, meaning it is going to shred and I mean shred through armor and health alike. Now here I've got the Colossus Suppressor. This is unique to the Odin itself and it actually increases the range and the control. So I would say it's even better than the Monolithic Suppressor in that sense. Then I've got the 730mm barrel, the GI Mini Reflex, the 30 round mags, and also the rubberized grip tape to help with the control. Now the fire rate and the control on the Odin are not ideal whatsoever. So I would say this is certainly not a, uh, a rusher's weapon quote unquote, but that said, it is great for medium range and long range engagements, so definitely take that into consideration. Following that up, we've got the M13, which really I think is one of the best weapons in all of Warzone. And in turn, it's also one of the best rifles as well. Now on the M13, I'm using the Monolithic Suppressor, I know, big surprise, the Tempest Marksman Barrel, the GI Mini Reflex, the Commando Foregrip, and the 50 round mags. But once again, 60 rounds is also a great choice if you are okay with being a little bit slower. Next up, we've got the Scar, which honestly I would say is one of the rifles on the bottom of the barrel, right? Just because it does have some pretty rough recoil at times, and its magazine size is less than ideal to say the least. One thing I do notice a lot here, even when I'm landing shots, is I oftentimes have to reload even before I'm able to clean up the enemy I downed, which just is not going to be a great situation to be in, especially if you have, you know, multiple enemies pushing you at once. The scar really is not my, uh, my first go-to choice. However, I will say it is certainly usable, that's for sure, and I'm rocking the Monolithic Suppressor, the 20-inch LB barrel to extend the range and control stats, the Close Quarters Stock for some extra mobility, the Commando Foregrip to help with that recoil some, and also the 30-round mags because this thing absolutely needs more ammo. But frankly, I would say that's still not even enough in most cases, but you, uh, you sort of gotta play the cards you're dealt in this case. Now, rifle number 8 is of course the AK-47, which is yet another powerhouse. And honestly, you've got some diversity here, right? You know, you can choose to treat it more like an SMG and build it for those close and medium range fights. However, I personally think the distance game is the one worth playing. So that means I am once again using the suppressor that is monolithic, the skeleton stock for better mobility, the commando foregrip, the 40 round mags, and also the stippy grippy too. But, like I said, you do have some options here. You can always trade those 40 round mags for an optic, maybe even a barrel if you do want some more range, or the 545 rounds if you want to play it more up close. And honestly, all of those are solid choices. Now, we also have a few DLC weapons to break down as well, including the Ram 7, which is another great choice, definitely one of the best ARs in the game. And on it, I'm using the Monolithic Suppressor, the Ranger Barrel, the GI Mini Reflex, the Commando Foregrip, and the 50 round mags as well. So a very typical and I guess standard setup here that allows the Ram to be good up close and at some longer ranges at the same time. Then the final rifle that we've got is the Grau or Grau 556. And you guys probably already know this setup since this is like my number one go-to class. But in case you are not familiar with it, I use the Monolithic Suppressor, the Nexus Barrel, which changes both the iron sight and also increases the range and control. Then I've got no stock on there, the Commando Foregrip, and the 50 round mags to close things out. So those are the best attachment setups for each assault rifle, but you know, what about the rest of the class? Well, honestly, that's where things are pretty simple. Either you want something that complements the rifle for long range fights, or for close range fights. So my recommendations here come in the form of a sniper or a shotgun. So for the GRA, the RAM, the M4, and honestly even the M13, I think using the HDR with monolithic, the pro barrel, the tac laser, the thermal sniper scope, and also the stalker scout stock is the wave. Whereas with the AK-47, the SCAR, the Odin, the FAMAS, the FAL, and also the Kilo, I think using the R90 shotgun with the choke, the sentry barrel, the 5 milliwatt laser, the stippy grippy, and sleight of hand is a better choice, since those rifles do struggle a little more in CQC fights. 
However, if you don't want to go for two primary weapons via overkill or multiple loadout drops, the RPG is a great secondary as well. Now for the perks, Cold-Blooded, Ghost, and Tracker are the ones I think are the most beneficial, but of course, if you want to use two weapons earlier on, use a loadout with overkill first, and then grab another loadout either for free or through the buy station, and then swap to the same class but with Ghost, then you've sort of got the, uh, the best of both worlds. Then, finally, for the equipment, I always use the C4 Lethal and the Heartbeat Sensor Tactical. So, with all of that being said, those are the best loadouts for every assault rifle here in Warzone, and that is going to wrap things up for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, or if you found it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it. And of course, if you're new here, and you want to stay up to date with the latest Call of Duty news, intel, updates, leaks, and pretty much everything in between, feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on, that way you'll always know when I upload a new video. As I said in the intro, today is the final day of the semi-finals for G Fuel Code Madness, meaning we are basically only a few hours away from potentially guaranteeing ourselves a custom G Fuel Shaker Cup. So if you want to help increase my chances of moving on to the finals, be sure to use code IMMORTAL at checkout on anything on the site. You know, it can be a $5 order, it can be a $40 order, it's based off of code uses alone, so you could do multiple orders, and order size does not come into play, so long as you are using code IMMORTAL. But once again, thanks so much for tuning in, and until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.